One of the great features of Microsoft Edge, uh, the new version of Microsoft Edge, is that it can actually read out the web page for you. Not only that, but it includes Microsoft's Immersive Reader, which actually adds a number of other functions as well, too. So let me just show you how this can be really helpful for um, in the classroom or for students and even teachers in trying to make things more understandable or more accessible. So let's just take a look at this Wikipedia article on Stanley Park. And so if you are on this page in Edge, you would see a button that appears up here in the toolbar, which looks like a little book with a speaker on it. So I'm just going to click on that. Now, if you don't see that button, um, there is a little trick to get around. But one of the other things that also, instead of having to click on the button, you can also hit the F9 key and it should open it up. But if you don't see that, what basically this is doing is it just adds read colon and then two forward slashes to the front of the name in order to make that work. So in other words, if I went back to this page and I just put my cursor at the beginning here and typed in read like this, it would actually do the same thing. So there are some web pages where you won't see that button. And I discovered that if you type in the read, it actually takes you there. So it's just a way of getting around things. I don't know why that is, but hopefully that helps you. All right, so here is my article on Stanley Park in a much more readable format. Now, this is another reason why I like this function. Let's just say I'm in class and I want to project a website article to the front of the class. I just want to focus on the text. If I put it into the immersive reader, in this mode, I can actually do a few different things. So I'm just going to go into text preferences here. And what I can do now is I can take um, this and I can actually make my text larger, for example, make it a little more readable in the back of the classroom. And I can also change like color background. So example of that is some people find it easier to read uh, white text on black background for there are certain people that that would work better for. Uh, text spacing can be made wider. So that's a little bit easier for some people to read as well too. And then there are some different themes for colors and stuff like that. But um, hopefully that helps. Now going over to the reading preferences, here's where we can also do a few other things. Um, when this reads, and I'll read that for you in a second, this is where we can go line by line. We can do it individual lines or we can focus on uh, three lines or five lines at a time. And I can also translate a page. And I can choose a language and have it translate the entire page. One other interesting feature is you can turn on picture dictionary. And that means that whenever you want to get, for example, if I want to click on the word park, it pulls up a little image of park. Now it doesn't work for everything. You'll notice that it, it does it for certain words. Um, and so mostly it's a lot of things like nouns and stuff, but it makes it a little bit easier for some students. I'm just going to turn that off. All right, so let's get to the reading part. So I want to have this read aloud. So I'm just going to click on read aloud. Stanley Park. This article is about the park in Vancouver. For other uses, see Stanley Park, disambiguation. Stanley Park. Now, you'll notice something. It started right at the very top. What if I didn't want it to start at the top? What if I wanted to start here? Well, I could highlight this, and I can right click, and I can say continue to read aloud from here. Stanley Park is a 405 hectare, 1,001 acre, public park in British Columbia. Canada that makes up the northwestern half of Vancouver's downtown peninsula. So you notice it isn't 100% natural, but it does sound fairly good. And you can actually, in your voice options, you can choose to have it read faster. So some students have found it helpful. They don't want to be looking at a text. They would rather be listening to the text. Maybe they're working out or on the bus or something like that, and they just don't want to do that. They can actually turn it on, and they can actually make it go faster. So you can actually. Uh, choose from a number of different languages. Now, if you don't see these that look like natural, maybe you only see three. I think in this case it'd be Linda, Mark, and Zira. I can't remember exactly which three come standard with that. Maybe it's David, Mark, and Zira because the United States ones typically come. They sound much more, you know. Peninsula surrounded by waters of Burrard Inlet and English Bay. Sounds like if you've been, you have watched the movie um, War Games, kind of reminds me of War Games. It's not a real voice. Uh, this box just interprets signals from the computer and turns them into sound. Shall we play a game? Or um, n almost like a uh, short circuit. Apart, undone, dismantle, dissect, disassemble. But it's not quite that bad. 
um, but it is still pretty computery. And the reason why is those are the offline versions. In other words, they're installed on your computer. All these other ones that say natural, these are online ones, and you have to activate them. So I'm not going to get into that function right now, but um, if you're online and you've installed Microsoft Edge more recent editions, you probably will see some of these as well too, and in different languages. So um, that one that I had before was Microsoft Area Online Natural, and it sounds pretty good to me. So there is the read aloud function really handy for some students. I'm just going to turn off the read aloud. I'm going to go back again to some of the other functions that are here. So some of the other functions, um, if you if you have um, a page like Wikipedia or something where it has a contents page and linking, it'll also have that over here. Um, other functions that it does have as well are grammar tools. Very kind of cool functions where you can actually have it divide up syllabus, uh, syllables, sorry, not syllabus, syllables, and you can also divide up things like marking nouns, adjectives, adverbs, and things like that with different colors. So, and then you can have it use different labels. And um, there they are. Just took a few seconds to kind of go through the whole thing. So you can see here now that it's marked purple and black and things like that for the different colors for different things. Um, Obviously on a smaller text, it wouldn't take as long for it to kind of pull that up. But there it is. It actually can give you some things and you can actually um, hover over some of these things and get more information on when that is reading. So uh, let's go to the line focus. I just want to talk about that one for a moment. This is where you can actually have it read out loud, but still only focus on certain areas. So now if I go to read aloud, Stanley Park. It now will this article highlight is about the park in Vancouver. only certain parts of the text For other and uses, move to the see next Stanley part. Park, disambiguation. Stanley Park. So you can see how it moved that Aerial one section. So it helps to focus for some people who have some reading disabilities and trying to make that work for them. Um, that's a really good function as well. So there you go. That is uh, Immersive Reader with uh, Read Aloud. Now you don't actually have to be in Immersive Reader to make this all work. So let me give you one more example here. Um, say I'm in a page and I want to highlight a text and just read this text in the middle of everything. So I can actually highlight a text by clicking and dragging over and then right click and say read aloud selection. Picking a career can be a tough decision. At so there is that. And again, you still have the voice options and all that. So there you are. That's Immersive Reader. And that is read aloud in Microsoft Edge.